Hey guys, Hammy here, and some news for you today. Looks like the Doomfist hype train might be starting with what appears to be the first concrete little clue towards a new hero coming. Quick bit of news for you on a clue just found on the Overwatch PTR that might hint to the release of the next hero and perhaps even a new animated short. In this video I'll be quickly updating you on the news, what it could mean and how it might actually tease Doomfist and perhaps an animated short, and then a little bit of speculation as to if an animated short is coming, then what it could contain and who it might feature. The new Bastion, Mercy and other patch went live to the public test realm last night and when the PTR is updated for gameplay changes, the team also push other files to the test server. Voice lines that I've shared here before of course, but also any other changes to the game and that includes levels and level textures. In this update, as I was looking through the game files for new sound files, Reddit user Vexner managed to snag this interesting looking map texture from Numbani's files. Now Vexner is experienced at this kind of thing, so I believe this is totally credible. In it we see a broken payload with glass shards shattered all around, as if someone has tried to steal or perhaps even stolen its contents. Of course, the payload on Numbani is, or was, transporting none other than the Doomfist, or a version of it. The legendary weapon that could level a skyscraper at one point, and that had three bearers, or at least two that we know of, the saviour, the scourge and the successor. What we know about Doomfist's story has all been covered in a previous video I've done and a lot of people have talked about it before. So why is this change in the payload important and what can it mean for a new hero and potentially a new animated short release? Well the first thing is map foreshadowing. In case you've forgotten, the Overwatch team have done this before, making small changes in maps ahead of animated shorts to hint at them. Firstly for recall, in Watchpoint Gibraltar the glass was broken in a patch shortly before the animated short was released, ahead of the monkey business, yes I know he's a gorilla, that Winston and Reaper caused there. Fast forward to Dragons and Arrows and Shuriken over the cat point turned up shortly before the animated short and again during the animated short we saw how these got here when Hanzo and Genji were duking it out before Hanzo discovered that his brother was still alive after all. So if there's potentially going to be a change and the payload in Numbani is going to be broken then this is a strong hint I think that we're going to see Numbani featured in an animated short and therefore the likelihood of Doomfist being featured increases dramatically given the hero's association with the map. So what could this all mean? I think there's three reasonable speculations we could make as to why an animated short on top of a new hero are probably due soon. Outside of the Terry Crews powerful hype and tweets, those have already been discussed in my Doomfist video if you want to catch up on it. To kick things off, on the official boards the other day, Michael Chu, lead writer, story boss on Overwatch, mentioned this in response to a question on when the next story content was coming. We're all excited to continue to explore the world of Overwatch and are hard at work creating new story content for the year, which should hopefully start to roll out in the very near future. Stay tuned. So we should be expecting something pretty soon. I reckon an animated short along with a new hero would make a lot of sense for this. And here's why. Number one, simply put, timings. From watching the animated shorts panel at BlizzCon 2016 and previous things Blizzard have said about the process of making animated shorts, obviously these take time and resources. Now Blizzard put out six animated shorts last year. I'll go into this more in another video that I'm working on. The last two were on a three month cycle. After launch and the intensity of a few animated shorts in a short period around May 2016, we then had The Last Bastion in August and Infiltration in November. Those were on a three month cycle. If you take another three months after those two, that brings us to, well, February or March of this year if the team is working in that kind of way. I'm not hugely familiar with the in-depth of team working processes, but I'm a little bit familiar with scrum and sprint methodology. These are different ways that teams organize themselves to deliver tasks to deadlines on a particular roadmap or set of tasks. And very often they can work in set time periods, which is why I'm thinking about this three month cycle. We've seen this three month cycle for other things, for example, like Blizzard seasonal events. Remember, of course, that Arna was in July and then Sombra in November. So roughly that was three or four months development time or cycle. Putting those together could mean that we see a new hero and or a new animated short late February to March or perhaps April. This window is the right time for some new content to be coming. The second thing is how closely the animated short team actually work with the game team and the effects that that might have on animated short creation. From the BlizzCon 2016 animated short panel, we learned actually how closely these two teams work together in terms of taking the models from the game team and upscaling them and tweaking them so that they can be used in animated shorts and importantly, also the map models and textures as well. This change to Numbani does feel, outside of the broken glass hype, and as little as we know, like a part of the process of making an animated short. Take the last Bastion. Bastion already existed as a model of course and the geographic location for the short didn't at all. There was no map model that most of the outside of that animated short was based on. So as all shorts bar the last Bastion have been based to start with on existing levels, the hard work for the last Bastion, or harder work there, was probably making the new environments. 
For Infiltration, you have a new hero in game in Sombra who had a game model in an existing level, Volskaya Industries. We then saw new things, Katia Volskaya as a new model for example, and also Zarya 2 being introduced. Get the new fancy high-res model with the hair mesh that entails. Now we see an actual map change to Numbani, this could mean that Blizzard have perhaps updated a lot of the textures too. I'm not au okay fait with 3D modelling files, although I am trying to learn. If we see some smart folk like Vexta finding that Numbani's textures or files have been updated in more subtle ways, then that could also be a sign that the level's been prepared to be used in an animated short, and a sign that we're on the right track. Let's wait and see. My third piece of support for speculation around Numbani is that if you've watched for careful details in maps and animated shorts, there has been foreshadowing of things happening in Numbani for a long time, mysterious forces attacking it, its Unity Day celebrations being interrupted, both in terms of in-game assets and also in shorts hidden away in little places too. Also, remember Sombra's conspiracy image or conspiracy web. In Sombra's origin trailer, we saw this web where Sombra was trying to put together how the world of Overwatch was working. In the bottom left corner, and very much tied to Katia Volskaya and Volskaya Industries and the events of infiltration, we saw Volskaya being blackmailed in the short because she was being given technology by a mysterious Omnic, who is linked via this spider tank schematic to Numbani and the Doomfist. Now, I think that's a very nice segue from Infiltration. If something was going to happen in Numbani next, then it just moves straight along the path on this map from the events in Russia, and perhaps they could tie who this mysterious Omnic could be to Numbani and the new short. Whatever Sombra is blackmailing Volskaya about could perhaps take her and the Talon team to Numbani after Volskaya Industries, in addition to trying to recover the Doomfist. I would say that perhaps in a new animated short coming soon we'll see something happening in Numbani and it's an attack by some force, probably Talon, either trying to get the Doomfist or trying to follow up on the connections from Sombra's conspiracy image. The real question is, we've had this rough plot before. The Doomfist has been attempted to be stole by Talon before in Overwatch's original intro cinematic. If this is what's happening, well then how could Blizzard make it fresh? Character introduction and development would seem the obvious answer, along with using it to tie the story together. So here's my final couple of speculations on if this happens what we could see. The easiest would be introducing a new character besides Reaper or Widowmaker, and indeed Sombra, if it's Talon doing the work. Sombra was introduced as a protagonist in Infiltration. This could be a great way to introduce the Scourge Doomfist if he's still at large, or after Winston beat him, as mentioned in Overwatch's first ever cinematic. Outside of bringing in Doomfist, there could be a way of bringing outlying existing heroes into the story somehow. A little bit harder this one. I was working on a video before this news dropped that analysed what we could perhaps expect for Overwatch lore and story this year ahead, and that will be out later this week anyway. In it, I'm going to analyse what we've seen for story for all the existing heroes so far, and how could that affect what we see in future. The main things I saw were that Mercy, D.Va, Lucio and Zenyatta have had absolutely, quote, nothing just yet. And by nothing, I mean no dedicated comic or significant presence in an animated short. No chunky piece of lore that has moved their story onwards or given us a lot of information as to where they've come from in terms of their origin story. Remember, of course, Zari was the same until we saw her in Infiltration. And May, although she's had no huge comic or short presence, at least had Eco Point Antarctica story in game around the winter event to give us a little bit more flavour into her backstory. I also don't see the Ice Queen in the Barney is a natural fit, but who knows. Could any of these four characters feature then? Well, Diva and Mercy feel a little tricky to drop into Numbani right now, given what we know of their whereabouts. Diva is presumably on duty in Korea, although she did do a show or public appearance in Japan, due to the arcade poster in Hanamura. Mercy is in the Middle East, last seen presumably getting a letter from Genji, given the Feather and Sparrow style connotation in the Reflections Christmas comic. It looks like a tent and sandy environment. Why would Mercy be jetting over to Numbani? Well, geographically it's probably a slightly shorter distance than some of the other characters, but I still think it might be quite tricky to drop her in in a meaningful way. Lucio. Well, as Lucio's world tour was scheduled to stop in Numbani, it's possible he could show up. Do you remember though that the Lucio animated short hype of a few months ago was somewhat diffused when Johnny Cruz, Lucio's voice actor, issued a clarification on the interview that he did that that news was based on. So there's no proof of a Lucio animated short at the moment, and with Lucio releasing in Heroes of the Storm, the voice work that Cruz did could have well been for that. However, Lucio's still a reasonable fit to drop into a Numbani short, who knows. Zenyatta, well, as a wandering monk, we've seen him and Genji recently in Reflections together, in what looks like a snowy Nepal in the Christmas Reflections comic. Given Numbani's history as a city of omnic and human collaboration, cooperation and coexistence, there's actually a reasonable set of reasons why Zenyatta and perhaps his student might visit the city. Tie that to Sombra's investigation into Katia Volskaya's connections with this mysterious omnic and also the ties to Numbani, that could be a good tie too. 
Finally, as a little thought to wrap it all up, we've seen Tracer and Nambani before, fighting as what looks like a dropship flies behind her. So although it might have only been a short animation test or specifically created for the trailer it was featured in, there has been some work done there already in terms of getting Tracer maps and textures into Numbani. Tracer and Winston against Talon, with Doomfist crashing the party as they reacquire their weapon perhaps? Either way, I'm sure we'll have a lot to look forward to in Overwatch and its story over the next few months, and this little teaser seems to be the first thing in that step, so really looking forward to seeing what we find out. What do you think of this model development and news? Reckon we'll see a broken payload in game soon? And if so, what animated short plot do you think might come up next? Do you think my speculation is crazy or kind of reasonable? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for tuning in to this bit of Overwatch news, lore and story speculation. Do throw a like and share the vid, maybe a sub if you enjoyed, and be sure to let me know your predictions and comments below. I cover a whole bunch of Overwatch lore, hero story, voice lines, interactions, map lore, news and more, so be sure to check out all my latest videos in the playlist below and on the channel. Cheers for tuning in, I'm Hammy, take it easy.